once you have your insects pulled out of the water sample that you took, one of the things you can do with that is use the insects as a biological indicator or a bioindicator of water quality. And I've kind of mocked up some of the insects that we might have found in the dragonflies and damselflies, the true flies, and a couple of beetle families that we might have found. And what we do is we keep track of how many of each insect we caught in these groups. So if we caught one of these Eschnidae, those are the darners, uh, we look at their tolerance. You can look up the tolerance value in some sort of a publication. Purdue has one publication that you can use. But you look up the tolerance, and this tolerance is their tolerance to pollution. If they are more tolerant, they can exist in more polluted waters. Um, and you want to get the numbers and the tolerance of everything that you found. So if we found one of those six and one of those damselflies, three coronamids, those are the little red bloodworms, three predaceous diving beetles, and one liplid. And we look up those tolerance values associated with these different insects, which are three, five, three, three, five, nine, eight, five, and seven. So for example, for the ditiscid, the predaceous diving beetles, we caught three individuals. Their pollution to, tolerance to pollution is a five, and so we write five. And we just multiply those out because we want an average. So one times three is three, six, five is 30, one times nine, 24, 15, and seven. And you can just take an average across all of these, but it's, it's better to take an average within these different orders of insects. So take an average of beetles, average of dragonflies, because if you caught one dragonfly and a thousand midges, which is possible, this tolerance of this thing won't matter anymore, because this thousand in here will completely swamp your answer mathematically. So we're going to take an average within these three orders. So I want an average there and an average there. Uh, the average of these, we caught eight individuals, 42, I'm cheating, 5.25. So that is the average tolerance of all of these damselflies and dragonflies. The average tolerance of our true flies is going to be eight. And the average of our beetles, the predaceous diving and the hliplids, is going to be 5.5. So that is the average tolerance of the beetles that we caught. And then we take an average of all of these averages within orders for 6.25. So six and a quarter is our average tolerance to pollution of all the critters that we found in that sample. And you can look at the scale, which is right here, and 6.25 represents fairly poor. So that water, according to the things that we found, was fairly poor quality, fairly low oxygen, high organic pollutants, high siltation, so not great quality water. But you can do this using the insects that you find there um, if you can identify them to family and you have a guide like this that has a tolerance value. Why would you do this though? Well, if you went out and just measured it with a probe, you can get those same measurements, the water quality, the amount of oxygen. But that's just a snapshot in time. And if that's what you need, that's great. But what the insects do, because they're living there constantly, is this gives you an integrated view of water quality over the past season or the past year without sampling it time and time again over the past year. Because the insects have been there, say, for an entire year over the winter. This gives you a, a much larger time scale in terms of that water quality, which is why you might want to use insects as a biological indicator.